Hello, could you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is John Chalesky. Okay, um, first we will start with um, the warm-up questions. And first, can you tell me about your family's history with polka? My dad played the accordion. Um, ever since he was young, and he played polkas from his teens all the way to now in his late 80s. In fact, he's on YouTube now with one of the songs that he's, that he's recorded a couple of years ago. And uh, so when I started playing the accordion, I was playing classical music. And um, my dad says, there's really not a lot of return on classical music for an accordion player. You ought to play polkas. So I learned to play polkas when I was 10. Um, what is polka to you? Polka is um, happy music that makes the people that we play for happy. It's kind of a release. Um, it's really second nature to me now since I've been playing so long. And it's just a lot of fun to be able to share that passion with uh, the folks around me and, and the next generation. Okay. How did your family get to Omaha? My uh, family got to Omaha by means of my uh, great-grandparents. My grand, great-grandparents on my mom's and my dad's side uh, came uh, to America back in the early 1900s. And do you think that had an impact to the polka? Um, th that provided a, a huge impact based on their background and the music that they brought with them as my mom's side was all Polish and my dad's side was Polish and Czechoslovakian. And there's a lot of uh, polka style music that came with them. And can you explain what a polka is? Um, to explain what a polka is, a polka is a, is a peppy happy uh, dance in 4-4 four, four or 2-4 meter. So there's uh, four counts to a measure, and it gets people out on the dance floor. And um, the polka can be either Polish or Czechoslovakian or German, and maybe there's some, uh, some others as well. Um, so it's basically a 4-4 four, four peppy dance. Who or what inspired you to start your polka? So how was I inspired to start? My dad played the accordion also, and I have pictures to share of him playing the accordion in his high school yearbook, and I have the same thing in mind. Um, I was inspired as he was playing when I was a, a child, three, four years old. My dad would play, and my sister and I would, would just love to sit and listen or, or jump around on the floor. Um, and uh, when my dad was at work one day, I found his accordion, and I Start, I snuck uh, playing it. I started learning how to play White Christmas, memorizing the swirls on the ivory keys. And he caught me, and I thought I was in big trouble. He was a policeman. I thought I was going to be arrested. And uh, he says, we're going to have to get you a lesson sometime. I think I was about five years old then. So I started taking lessons when I was eight and started playing polkas when I was 10. Um, why did you start a band at such a young age? How do you think? of your band, your band names over the years? I joined a polka band when I was 14, but before then I was playing uh, polka music with another popular musician in Omaha, uh, Bob Zagosta. He and I would play in my mom and dad's basement. We would play polka music on Saturdays and my dad would encourage us and then he would reward us by going and getting Dinker's hamburgers for us. So Dinker's goes all the way back 50 plus years ago. Um, and that's what got, uh, got me going with polkas. When I was 14, uh, my dad introduced me to the players of the Polka Tears Band. And I ended up sitting in with them. And then I became a regular member shortly thereafter. Um, I didn't pick the name for that band or many of the others until I created the Sheely Town Band. And Sheely Town is, is basically an area in South Omaha that uh, starts at Hanscom Park and goes eastward uh, to the interstate right around Martha Street. And it's kind of where Dinker's Bar is located right now. And uh, Sheely Town was, was a kind of a melting pot of, of different cultures and uh, ethnicities that, that came, nationalities that came, starting with the Irish to the German to the Polish. And so we picked that as a, as a name to kind of represent um, our music opportunities. We play more than polkas, but um, we, we basically picked that because it, it kind of reflected um, our background. Um, at 
at age 14, was the polka environment a good environment for you? Why or why not? When I was 14, the polka environment was great. I was too young to drink, everybody else drank, so I could watch them having fun. I could concentrate on, on playing the music, learning the songs. Um, and I made a lot of good friends, uh, both adults and, and basically teenagers. Um, everybody that was coming was having a good time and having a lot of fun. And what that showed me is that polka music is fun and it's, it's a release for people that work very hard and they want to be able to party and enjoy themselves. And so um, it, was a, it was a very good uh, environment for me and I continued to learn uh, to play music as I went. So polka was always very positive in your life. It was never like negative and any, not, nothing negative. I, it, in terms of positive and negative, I can't think of too many negatives for polkas. Um, that's, I, it, everything that I've seen, when we play polka music, we make people happy. And that's really the main purpose. That's part of our mission is to play to the people. And if you look at the Shealy Town website, we play to our strengths, we play to the people, and we have fun. And playing to the people means playing the kind of music that they like. Um, playing our strengths means that we're going to do as well as we can and sound as good as we can with what instrumentation and vocals we have. And so it's always, as far as I know, it, I can remember, it's been positive. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about some of the festivals or events you have played at? <clears throat> I played at a lot of events um, over, I guess, the last 50 years. Some of those events are dances. Some of them are festivals where um, we, we just play uh, polka music and other bands play and people come and listen and dance and, and have a few drinks and, and really enjoy the music. Um, and that's, that's happened ever since I was uh, a teenager. When I was a young adult, I belonged to the uh, Polonaires band. I, sorry, I joined the Polonaires band. And the Polonaires uh, were pretty notorious uh, in the Midwest back in the 70s, and they, they grew in popularity. And we used to go on bus trips to places like Minneapolis, Buffalo, Chicago, Milwaukee, um, those places that had Polish festivals that were that had, had really a concentration of Polish people and really good bands. And those bus trips were among the most fun times that we ever had. And so it was, it was those types of events that, that really uh, piqued the fun that we had was, were the bus trips and, and the festivals. And was there ever like a vivid, do you have a vivid memory or a vivid moment that you really enjoy of events or that you remember it to this day? I would think that um, in terms of <clears throat> one highlight of all those events might be the Wisconsin Dells trip that the uh, Shealy Town Band took last year. Um, I coordinated the bus trip. I, I worked with the promoter there, um, provided the schedule, did the, the set lists, worked with the guys practiced, got everybody going uh, on the bus so we had a full bus load. And I, once, once all the coordination and organizing was over and we were just going and playing, it was so fun. And to be able to play with the best bands in the United States and to keep up with them, uh, it, it was it was really rewarding. Um, we we had a great time. Um, what is the relationship between polka and dancing? Are there traditional outfits that you wear? I can provide a video on uh, traditional outfits that dancers wear, and I will do this a, a, after this. But they, for for polka dancing. Um, when you dress in the traditional Polish garb, both the male and the female have outfits. And they're very uh, colorful, red, um, black, white, and you know, they represent uh, the colors of Poland. And um, the dancers really get into dancing the polka and, and they enjoy wearing uh, those outfits. And in your band, did you guys also have to sing and dance or just? Okay, so when we play music, um, we don't dance when we're up on stage. We get into the music and we move around some, but we don't dance. We play the music and we sing. Um, when we're not on stage and the music's playing, most of us dance. Okay. Okay. So where are all the places polka is played? The polka is played 
in many, many places in the United States. And the polka actually originated in the United States. Music came over from Poland. There were traditional dances. Um, one is like the Krakowiak, which is a polka tempo, but it, it is, a, is a style of music uh, in Poland. But when in the um, 50s and 60s, when polka uh, really got going in the United States, um, it started spreading and it, it started on the East Coast. Um, we have Buffalo, uh, Connecticut, uh, Pennsylvania, um, Chicago, Illinois was huge, now Omaha. Um, it's actually in California now, so I would tell you that, um, uh, well, the, Pol the Polish capital of the United States is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There's a lot of polka there. There's polkas in, in uh, Minnesota. Uh, it, if, if we were going to do a tour, we could probably tour 25 or 30 states where they would have polkas. I was invited to um, a polka festival in Phoenix, Arizona this coming November. So uh, polka's gotten around. Okay. So now I'll be asking you more personal questions about with polka. Now I'm getting nervous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what made you change from polka to country rock? Why did you switch back? Why did you switch back to polka? In 1981, the Polonaires disbanded. And when they disbanded, their their fan club of 200 plus members members were were pretty disappointed. There were a number of reasons that it disbanded. And when it disbanded, I stopped playing music. I substituted here and there for other bands. Um, in 1983, I was invited uh, to audition for a country rock band, which was kind of a lounge uh, band in a ways. And so I played the accordion with it for a while, um, realizing after a while that uh, the accordion doesn't necessarily fit with every song. I bought a couple of keyboards and I used uh, the, the keyboards in the country rock bands. And that band was around for a few years and then the owner moved to Kansas City, uh, or the leader of the band moved to Kansas City. And um, it was a fun experience and it was a building block because right now we do a lot of Oktoberfest gigs, which has some country in it. Um, we do Irish, which has some country flavor to it. So everything that I've learned so far has been a building block for the next step. And um, that's how I got into country rock music. Um, what are your best, best and worst polka memories? What are my best and worst polka memories? I would say that it's easy to say that the worst polka memory is when we're playing and there's no audience because we like to play to the people. And we were hired for a couple of venues over the last five years where the advertising maybe wasn't what it needed to be and therefore there were very few people there. The weather wasn't good and we were set up outside so people didn't come out to hear us, they stayed inside. Um, I think one of the best memories that I have is when uh, when Sheely Town got started and that's that was six years ago um, my mother on her deathbed responded positively while she was in a coma to my playing music at her bedside and uh, when she passed I decided that I needed to get going again in music and so I formed a polka band and um, we played at the St. Stan's Festival for our breakout gig, I guess. It was back in uh, August 2012. And we hurried up within like five weeks and we learned 25 songs. We played all 25 of them and they all sounded really good. And so uh, the crowd responded real positively and that was, that was kind of a, a, a boost to, to our self-confidence that, you know, we could really ring the music. And so that may be one of the best memories I have. So do you think your mother had a lot to do with saying yes to the Shirley Towns? Um, my mother was in a coma and she, she was basically, she was dying the next day. And um, when I brought my accordion in and played a couple of songs for her, she got up on basically on her elbows and um, you know, kind of positioned herself up and she, and she smiled when she heard the music. And that really encouraged me. 
to play music again. So she had a huge impact on me getting back into the music. As big or bigger an in, impact of my dad being a musician and my picking it up from him. How was she involved in polka when you were my, my mom was, uh, attended almost every event that I played um, from when I started. Back when I was a teenager, my mom and dad were almost always there, uh, unless they couldn't be. Uh, they enjoyed the music immensely. They, they enjoyed uh, seeing me up there and, and playing. And um, they attended just about every event, including the bus trips. Um, they were part of the Poliner fan club, and they supported that, and my dad did a lot of work for them. Um, they, they were very involved in the music, and having parents involved in a positive fashion like that really keeps you going. And so they were both very, uh, I, I think, crucial to my continuing music. I, don't, I just want to pause, because I don't think they know what, about the St. Stan's Festival. So could you tell them a little bit about what the St. Stan's Festival is? St. Stan's Festival has been going on for a long time. Every year, the third Sunday in August, St. Stan, Stanislaus Festival is the biggest Polish festival in town. It is on 41st and J Street. I encourage you to go. It's uh, attended by maybe 10,000 people every year. Um, there, are, there are vendors and booths. Uh, the festival starts at 12 o'clock. The music goes from 12 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Our band plays from uh, 12 to 4, and we mix in with a couple of the uh, guys that played with the Polonaires, that started the Polonaires uh, back in the early 70s. Uh, part of our band plays with Bill and John Scott, and that's been a real bolster too, to us. It's been great. But St. Stan's Festival is the biggest in town, and um, I will also tell you that I think they sell the most beer out of any festival there is. Uh, eight hours of polka music and fun and games and people, it's like, a, it's like a family reunion. I mean, I see people that I went to grade school with that I haven't seen in 50 years and they come up to me and you still recognize them after 50 years, it's just amazing. Um, so it's, it's really like, a, like, like old home week, but uh, we do it every year. What instruments did you play? I started off on the accordion, and I've been playing that accordion um, off and on since I was eight years old. I also picked up the fiddle and started playing the fiddle when I was with the Polonaires uh, band. It was kind of a challenge from uh, somebody, um, and I accepted that challenge, and I learned to play fiddle, and we actually have that on the recordings uh, on the albums, and I'll show you the covers uh, later. I, um, I also can play the bass guitar, I play the keyboard. Um, I am also part of an Irish band, and with that Irish band I have my electronic accordion which can play uh, like a sound of any instrument that, that you want. I mean, it'll play bagpipes, um, uh, banjo, flute, bas basically anything. Um, in that Irish band, um, I've also picked up the, the tin whistle, so I know how to play that. So I probably can play maybe five, six instruments, but I will tell you that the accordion is by far uh, my most expertise because I've been playing it so long. And out of those five instruments that you told me about, which one do you think has the like, biggest role in folk? I think the accordion by far has the biggest role in polka music. Um, and with our band, not only do I play the right hand like some accordions play, accordionists play, but um, I also play a MIDI bass on the left side, which sounds like a bass guitar. So I'm basically covering two instruments with one when I play. Um, we have trumpets, a clarinet, a violin player, and drums. They're all critical, but without an accordion, there's not much of a polka band. So, um, what is your favorite polka song to play? Wow, what is my favorite polka song? That's that's a tough one. I might have to say my Mary Lou polka. My mom's name was Mary Lou, and so when we played, it reminds me of her. Um, can you can you comment on the woman in polka and what role they take? There are a, no a number of women um, in polka bands. There are uh, 
a number of women that support polka bands. There are plenty of women who are spouses of men that play in polka bands. And the time that we put in to polka music, whether it's rehearsing or playing or tearing down, setting up equipment, um, booking gigs, updating websites, um, having retrospectives with the band members, we put a lot of time into it and our wives are very understanding and they very much support it. And a lot of times my wife will uh, sit at the door and take admission on certain events where we're sponsoring the dance. And so um, I will tell you, and I have one of the pictures here, that my wife is the biggest supporter of our band. And it, it uh, is very rewarding to me. So now I'll be talking about, asking you questions about the ev evolution of polka. So first question, do you think polka in Omaha has changed throughout the years, and if so, in what way? Polka in Omaha has changed throughout the years. <clears throat> when polka first started here, the music was very fast. Um, there's a dance called the Chicago Hop that you would not have been able to do that to with the early polkas. The tempo was a tempo of 120 or faster. It was extremely fast. Um, back in the 60s, uh, a gentleman's uh, band called Little Wally slowed the music down so that people could dance to it better. Um, there was maybe one trumpet back then in, in a band, if there was a trumpet at all. So you, so you had a little bit of brass um, in a polka band, if you even had that. Um, earlier than that, there was a stand-up bass where somebody might have used a bow to, to um, drone across the strings on that. Uh, that's evolved into an electric bass guitar now. Um, the one trumpet, if, it, if that, has evolved into two trumpets. The music's gotten a lot of uh, high energy effect now, where we really push the music in people's face so that they're just right into it. It's not background music. And the dancing has evolved as well. So back when, uh, when the music was fast, like 120 tempo, People dance differently than they dance to a tempo of 102 to 108. And um, they can still dance the way they did, but now they can dance the Chicago Hop. And so it's a lot livelier and a lot more jumping um, around. And so it's evolved in a number of ways. And do you like the polka from back then or from right now? I like them all. I like all the polkas. I like the old polkas. I like the new polkas. What our band tries to do is take an old polka and put a new spin to it. So we'll take a traditional song. Chevy Coin is a traditional song. Um, it's, it's, if you translate that, it's the old gray mare. Um, so Chevy Coin started as, a, as, a, as an old traditional number. And we put a Shealy Town spin on that, where we have a fiddle starting it off, and we go into a minor section towards the end, and then we, and then we do what we call a push at the very end uh, as well, where I on the accordion player bellow shake, and the, and the drummer um, bangs everything he can, cymbals, uh, drums, tom-toms, snares, and really gets the high energy going. So um, I like them both. And where would you like to see polka in Omaha in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, I would love to see the youth of Omaha embrace polka as I'm seeing it happening now. If you, if you attend our events, you will see that um, even people younger than teenagers are attending and, and dancing out on the floor. Teenagers, young adults, they're seeming to be embracing polka music, and we certainly want to keep polka music alive. So we'd like to pass our passion down to the next generations, and I see that happening. Okay. And to, today, polka is seen as generational music. In your opinion, is this true? And if not, why do you disagree? Could you repeat that? Sorry. Um, today's polka is seen as generational music. And in, in your opinion, is that is true? If not, why do you so it's been said that um, polka music is generational. Um, maybe the style changes per generation, but polka music in general continues on and it is meant to appeal to all generations. And I see it appealing to all generations. We play for folks from the 90s all the way down to toddlers 
and, and they all seem to like the music. And we give them a variety of polka music, and they seem to like that. So, yeah, it might be generational in some aspects, but the way I look at it, we just adapt the music to what the people want to hear. Okay, so um, I was asked what I had in my bag of tricks here. Well, I've got uh, the two album covers of the albums that we recorded back in 1977. This wasn't the first recording that I was part of, but this is the recording that I feel I'm most proud of. Um, we basically recorded all the songs on these two albums in one sitting, in one basically one afternoon of about five or six hours. We had very few retakes and um, turned out very well. And I'm sorry to say that uh, two people in the band are no longer with us. They passed away um, over the time. It's been over 40 years since we recorded these. So um, these are the two. Uh, on this album, I played accordion and I also played violin on a couple of numbers. Um, so which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> which one am I? Um, well, you can see on this one, I'm on your far left with a full head of hair and a beard. So go figure where the hair went. It wasn't because of polka music, but, um, and then on this one, I'm back here behind the bass guitar player. I have uh, a number of pictures that I can share with you. Um, this book has just a number of our fan club events number of pictures from our fan club events. This was a this was a picnic out at a person's cabin. Here's our some of our fan club and what they wore when they came to the dances or the events or they traveled with us. Um, it just really really brings back memories. I was lucky to get this from Mr. Bill Scott a few weeks ago and took some copies of a few pictures to put into uh, the envelope that you can take. Um, Again, most of this was a picnic. This guy has a lot of, a lot more pictures, and it's basically the, the, the fan club and, and certain events that we had. I've got some pictures in the envelope that I can, sh that I can show you. Um, it's kind of hard to show you all that, but this has been pretty well uh, chronicled by, by Bill Scott and the folks that were in the uh, in the fan club. I actually have a picture, there's a picture of my wife in here on one of them. Where's your wife? It's going to be hard to see her in one of these pictures, <laughs> but I have blown it up here. Oh, okay. um, and it's, it's, we're on a bus and uh, you can barely see me in the fiddle bowl because when we're on our bus and we're, and we're playing for uh, the folks on the bus, we're just acoustic. We don't have any amplification or anything. And we're playing and there's an accordion and a couple of trumpets and a clarinet and I'm playing, I'm playing my violin and my wife is sitting next to me. So you, should, you might be able to see that in one of these pictures because I actually blew them up. And then just more of the same in terms of uh, Obviously, in terms of pictures, I just happened to pull this one out. Um, picture of my, okay, so in this picture, th this, this shows you, so, so it's a, it's a um, pulling our fan club event, it's the picnic, and that's my dad on a lounge chair, and my mother talking to one of my sisters, and that's my brother there. And, um, I'm up here, the symbol is in, in the way, you don't see my face, but you can see my accordion there. We're actually playing on a, on a flatbed truck. And there's a picture in there that depicts that as well. A couple other pictures in here that are a little less than uh, prime time, so we won't get into those. Um, also, I brought for you a, uh, a flash drive that has a lot of these pictures on it. And that's in here. This is a picture of my dad in his high school yearbook, and he's playing with, uh, with a couple of uh, players, if, if you can zoom in and see that. This is kind of chronological. So we got that, and this happens to be a picture of me in my gross high yearbook. Um, I was playing with a few folks. Um, that happens to be uh, Dick Janik, who was also in a polka band, the drummer. This guy here is Jeff Davis. Uh, Sarpy County Sheriff, 
Katie Kressel, who owns a bar up on 42nd and L Street, and that's Lloyd Bennis, guy that moved out of town but was one of the smartest guys in the school, and we're all playing music there. I think that one was Hello, Dolly, to be honest. This picture is really blurry because I blew it up from about a two inch by two inch. It's on the back cover of, a, of an album that Big Joe Sedlick made back in the early 70s. Can you and tell him about Big Joe, a little bit about Big Joe? Big Joe was a huge polka promoter, um, lived in Columbus. He had a, uh, a show on TV that played for years and years. He had a radio show that played year, for years and years. Um, he sold a lot, of, uh, a lot of albums. He basically endorsed and, and, and pushed polka music around in these parts. And he was, he was just a huge uh, endorser of polka music. <clears throat> His brother, Lenny Rich, is still with us and, and plays concertina uh, sometimes with Bobby Z. So polka music was in their family as well. But anyway, this is a picture of the Polketeers on the back of that album cover. It was a two by two. There were 25 bands and we just happened to have one of the pictures um, on there. Can't see this one very well. When I was with the Polketeers, we played a Hawaiian luau. And um, when, you, when you're able to take a better shot of this, that's me with a, with a Hawaiian hat on with the Polketeers. This is the first picture that I have with the Polonaires in which I still had a full head of hair with no beard back in my younger times. And yes, we got to dress in these wonderful outfits when we were, uh, when we were with the Polonaires. So we had the white patent leather shoes, we had the red pants. These are actually long sleeve white with red polka dot shirts. And um, I, I guess they were okay outfits. I was, I was proud to be able to be wearing one from uh, Polonaires. The bus trips, um, this is when the people were getting off for lunch on one of the bus trips. So the um, musicians got out and serenaded them as they got off the bus and went over to, to eat lunch. And so that's me. This is the one where you can't probably see very well, but um, the bowstring is here. We're on the bus and my wife is to that side of me and we're doing our um, acoustic polka jam on the bus. Um, sorry, the picture's not better quality. This is that picnic I was telling you about that we played on a flatbed. That's me in those coach's shorts there. Um, this is Bill and John Scott, and these are the two of the guys that I continue to play um, music with, and we're gonna be playing with them at St. Stan's Festival again this summer. Our album cover that you already saw our other album cover that you saw. This is a picture of my dad playing accordion with Ron Grosky. It was uh, in a garage, they were doing a jam session and Ron Grosky was the Polonaires drummer and Ron is one of those that have passed, has passed away and is not with us anymore. So it's kind of special that my dad and I both had the connection to the same guy and he was a, he was a very, very good uh, polka drummer. <clears throat> Moving into the early 80s, when I decided to uh, audition for the country rock band, you had Rex, Rod, Ken, and myself. Uh, this band was called Easy Money. We were around for a few years. And then uh, Ken moved to Kansas City for a new job. And so um, we played any, any kind of country rock music. This is one of my best memories, and I think I mentioned this before. These are my five sons with me <clears throat> at our breakout at St. Stan's Festival. Uh, so my sons were all there to support our band and obviously to have a drink. This picture was actually in the Omaha World Herald. This is our number one fan whooping it up, uh, waving a hanky. This is my wife. And she is, uh, she's really getting the crowd going, as you can tell. And one of my sons is in the picture, and I think this is the arm of another one of my sons. This is a picture of Sheely Town as it was a couple of years ago. One of the members is no longer there. But we got Tim, my son, plays drums. Uh, 
Patrick is on the violin. The, the shorter guy here, Frank, is on trumpet. Mike's no longer with us. This is me trying to show off my Polish eagle tattoo. Um, this is Joe Vashak, who is our clarinet player and uh, our, our best vocalist. And Ben Degagne, who is the most recent U.S. citizen. He came from Canada. He joined our band a couple of years ago, and he's been just uh, doing a great job ever since. We were invited down to Kansas City, Kansas for a festival. And Kansas City, Kansas, uh, this is the crowd there for Sheely Town. This is the picture of us at St. Stan's, or at least what I'll call the Sheely Town Trio. When we get together and play Oktoberfest, this is our trio. This is the type of crowd we draw for St. Saint, uh, Saint Joseph's Day, which is the Polish equivalent of, of uh, St. Patty's Day. This is down at Donahue's, and it's always packed shoulder to shoulder. This is a picture of our Irish band. Same violin player, same drummer, different guy on guitar. And the crowd that we draw at the Rusty Nail when we play Irish music. And this is a picture of my mom and dad who inspired me to play. My mom had cancer when this picture was taken and she still came to family events and um, we were blessed. That's all I have for you in terms of pictures and goodies. All right, I, I think we have a couple questions that we just wrote down like maybe, um, oh, can you clap us out a polka beat? What a polka beat sounds like? Because you were, you were telling us, but I don't think any of us are very musical. Sure. So, what, so you said it's a one. It's like a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, da, 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 that was the Krakowiak. And then what's the one you were talking that was very fast, the one? Um, the earlier polkas were quite a bit faster than that. And uh, I don't even want to clap that out. I mean, <laughs> that, that's, that's like twice that fast. And so it was really hard for people to dance. So this, is a, this is the Polish music. And this is the tattoo that my sons bought for me for my 60th birthday several years ago. Polish eagle is a is a uh, the symbol of Poland. Um, my sons felt so strongly, and I have such a good bond with them that two of them also got Polish eagle tattoos just like this. And so I was like really honored and blessed that they wanted me to go under the needle for three hours and get this. But I actually it was on my bucket list. I didn't realize it was going to be this big or this or this uh, take so long to put on there. But now that it's there, I wouldn't have it any other way. This one song that we were listening to, what, She's Too Fat For Me. Yes. I Like, nowadays, I think, I mean, I took it a little offensive, but I can tell why it was, like, supposed to be funny back then. Like, I don't so know. What do you think about it? Yeah, what do you think about it? She's Too Fat For Me, the polka that's yeah. called She's Too Fat For Me. I don't want her, you can have her, She's Too Fat For Me. Yeah. I'm happy to say that that's not a Polish polka. <laughs> Okay. Um, we do play it when we get a request for it, and we do get requests for it, so we play it when we, when we are asked. Um, we are normally not asked in a Polish venue because it's just not Polish, mm -hmm. but in an Oktoberfest, basically anything goes, and um, we just uh, we play it when we're asked to play it, and we just hope that people are... Their, their sensitivity is, is not offended yeah. by that. I can, I like, it's not that big of a deal to me now, but when I first heard it, I just, I, it was a little weird. But it is, and it, it could be taken that way, and I, I do acknowledge that. Okay. So, can, why is polka widely called happy music? Polka is widely called happy music because it is. It's peppy. Uh, people dance, and when they're around other people that are dancing and enjoying the same music, um, everybody is happy. Um, it, it just it brings the happiness out in people. I think it's the tempo. I think it's the it's the enjoyment of the band when the band is playing. The energy that we provide. Um, I, I think everybody's happy when when they're around polka music. I can give you a cliche on what polka is. And what Big Joe used to say is polka music is happy music for happy people. 
what I'll tell you is polka music to me brings happiness out in me when I see other people happy. And so polka music, polka is rewarding uh, for me and very enjoyable. I, I don't know how to say it any other way. Um, I have five sons and they all come out to the polka events. Um, a couple of years ago we needed uh, uh, another drummer because our drummer was not able to drum with us anymore and gave me some lead time. One of my sons, the, the middle son, Tim, um, Tim has been a drummer for a while and never played on stage but played a lot at home and he was a very good drummer and so he said, hey dad, uh, I'll see if I can fill the gap and he's just come in and been dynamite. Um, he's, he's got such a steady beat. It's like he's got a metronome in his head. Um, he's he's um, just an outstanding drummer and I'm really blessed to have him as part of our band. It was great to have him as an addition to the band. Uh, we're recording a CD and the only person that didn't need editing was my son on the drums because his beat was just so perfect. Happens to be a perfectionist so I guess that that makes sense but um, it's just been great with him. Um, my oldest son John, uh, next oldest Rob, uh, Tim, Steve, and David have all been supporting polka music and coming to as many events as they can. It's been a lot of fun having them be there and they, they really encourage us um, and, and kind of get us going and shout out requests and, and um, it's been a lot of fun having them as fans. Been great. So this particular accordion is uh, an electronic accordion. It's got a lot of sampled sounds on it that I'm not going to play for you because they're not really for polka, but when I play Irish, I can play bagpipes, flute, banjo, mandolin, violin, um, on and on. I got a lot of organ sounds on it. And when I'm playing with the polka band, I provide the bass guitar sound. So I have this, this sound instead of, well, didn't go off. So on my left hand, I've got the bass guitar, and now I'm also going to play piano chords. So on the right side is my treble, where I play whatever sound that I want. That's a musette sound, but I normally, for Polish uh, polka style, I'll play um, just the regular master. Now a song I'm going to play for you is called the Krakowiak, which is not a polka, but it's a polka tempo. Um, Krakowiak is one of five uh, national dances in Poland. There are a number of them, and, and the, the Krakowiak is one of them. So that's what this one's going to be. It's called the Krakowiak. <laughs> your version of it that was just a warm-up <laughs> oh, no. stretch my fingers out here comes my heels <laughs>